My name's Kate Bradbury, I'm an author and garden writer and my latest book is called The Tree in My Garden. Trees change throughout the year and watching them undergo this process not only connects you to the tree but connects you to the garden and the wider world. And I think it's really important that we people with our very, very busy lives connect to the environment in whatever way we can. And that one tree in your garden could be the route to doing that. Depending on the species, you might have blossom in spring, berries or fruit in summer towards autumn. Um, some trees have spectacular autumn colours before the leaves fall. Other trees are evergreen and, and provide berries, beautiful red berries against this dark green background throughout winter. There's something to be had from every tree throughout the year. It's really important to think about those things when you're planting your tree because the main thing that you're going to do once you've planted it is fall in love with it and enjoy it throughout the year. In spring, trees are waking up from winter dormancy. The sap rises, the leaf buds and the flower buds burst open. And with that comes the species that feed on the trees, the pollinators that feed on the flowers, the moths that lay eggs on the leaves. Every leaf is so fresh and new. Every flower is loaded with pollen and nectar. And if you get a tree that's covered in spring blossom or covered in the freshest, newest leaves, it's just the most beautiful thing after a long winter. I love it. Three of my favourite trees in spring are hawthorn, crabapple and beech. Um, the hawthorn and the crabapple flower their socks off. Their, their flowers are amazing. The crabapple flowers in particular just closed, the whole of the tree is covered. The red mason bee, which many of us know from having bee hotels in our gardens, it's been proven to come out the very same day as the apple blossom. Nobody quite understands why. Is it the humidity, is it the temperature? What is it? But the day the blossom opens on my crab apples, I know that that's the day that the bees wake up. And I go home and I have a look and they have, they've woken up. It's wonderful. They have this amazing affinity with apple blossom. They can pollinate apple blossom 125 times better than a honeybee. So apples and crab apples in particular are really good for this one species of bee. Hawthorn Blossom's got a really interesting story because it actually releases the same chemical as a recently deceased body, which sounds really gruesome, but it's also amazing because hawthorns are pollinated in particular by flies and those flies that are attracted to dead bodies are also attracted to the hawthorn flowers. They pollinate the hawthorn flowers and then it's those flies that are responsible for the hawthorn flowers turning into berries, which feeds the birds in autumn. In the Middle Ages, it was considered bad luck to bring hawthorn blossom into the house because it was said to smell of the plague. And we know now that it's because the same chemicals released by the flowers are those released by recently dead bodies. So I like to think I've got a little bit of history going on in my garden, but I won't bring the flowers into the house. Beech is one of my favourite trees. I have not got the space to grow one in my garden, but I love in spring, I just love going to the woods and seeing beech trees. The green of, of the newest beech leaf is the most beautiful thing in the world. Summer's an interesting time for trees because they don't always look their best. They've done their flowering and they haven't quite fruited most of them. So it can be a time of year where they're just in leaf, but those leaves themselves are absolutely beautiful. And they're also doing an incredible job of absorbing the sunlight, turning it into sugars to feed the tree, obviously absorbing carbon dioxide as well, drawing it into the tree itself, and then even then locking it into the soil beneath them. So summer's a really important time, um, and you might think it's a bit of a boring time for trees, but it's, it's, it's not really. My favorite trees in summer, I love cherries, um, fruiting cherries um, fruit in summer, they fruit in June. Um, you get all that beautiful um, spring blossom, and then you get the fruit in June as well, which, which I love to share with the birds. Um, I love silver birch because of its airy canopy. It has this really wonderful way of just sort of shimmering in the light. Silver birch is a really good tree for a small garden because the light filters through. It doesn't fully shade. So it provides dappled shade through its airy canopy, which is actually quite an important and useful feature that it can offer to the garden. 
I really love elder as well. Elder provides berries. Most fruiting trees fruit in autumn, but elder fruits um, sort of earlier than that and sort of late summer. Um, obviously, you can make lots of things with elderberries. You can make elderberry cordial, um, but it's a really good source of um, food for birds as well. And I love watching blackbirds feasting on elderberries in summer afternoons on the allotment. In autumn, we're sport for choice, really. There's so many trees that provide amazing autumn colours that really bring fire and light to your garden just as everything else is dying down. Spindle tree is absolutely gorgeous. It's more of a shrubby tree. It's very small and compact, um, but the autumn colour of spindles is absolutely amazing. The red of the leaves is gorgeous and that complements perfectly the beautiful orange and pink fruits. It's gorgeous. I also really love ginkgo. It's a fossil. It's a living fossil. It's one of the oldest trees we've got. They have these beautiful, simple leaves with no leaf veins at all. And it grows the most beautiful shade of yellow in autumn. Ginkgo's are really good for growing in cities, they're very tolerant of pollution, so they're a really good choice if you live in an urban area and they look really good too. Some trees don't really shine throughout the year and then completely come alive in autumn and one of those is liquid amber or the sweet gum. Um, just fantastic autumn colour, like the most intense reds and purples you've ever seen on a tree. It makes an amazing street tree, it makes an amazing focal point in a garden. It doesn't grow too big, so it's quite suitable for small gardens. Um, something like Lane Roberts, which is one of the most popular varieties for growing in the UK, and the red of the leaves is just sensational. Winter's not necessarily the most important time of year for trees. You know, they, most species are dormant. They're not at their flowering best. They're not, they've lost their autumn leaves. They're not fruiting, but some of them are at their absolute peak. One of my favorite winter trees is holly. It's got lovely, shiny, glossy, evergreen leaves, um, which are complemented by the brightest, reddest berries. Um, one of my favorite things about holly trees is that the song thrush um, will often claim a holly tree as its own and will guard it with its life for the whole of winter. But it spends so much time guarding the tree against other birds stealing its berries that it forgets to eat the berries themselves. So often if you've got a tree that's been guarded by a song thrush, you've still got berries in March because it's not got around to eating them. It's very sweet. Another evergreen I really like is, is yew. Um, obviously yew grows into an enormous tree, can live for a thousand years, but in our gardens we can grow yew as a hedge, which is really, really perfect tree um, for using as a foil against all other garden plants in summer, but then in winter it comes into its own with its lovely red berries and providing um, a splash of green where elsewhere there isn't much. And a deciduous tree that I really love in winter is Aesogrisium, or the paperbark maple. It has this lovely autumn colour in autumn and then its leaves fall, revealing this lovely papery orange russet bark that peels off and just looks really spectacular. If you, if you plant an Aesogrisium in a focal point in your garden, then every winter it's going to absolutely shine with its lovely papery bark that will just inspire you with all its colour and texture throughout the season. If you've got a small garden, I do think it's really important to have a tree that works in more than one season. So you've got a longer season of interest from this small space. So in my garden, I grow hawthorn because it provides flowers and fruit and autumn colour. Um, I've got rowan as well, which does a similar job. If I had a bit more space, I'd have a crab apple because they are so beautiful in spring, in summer, in autumn. And then, you know, they lose their leaves in winter, but not for very long. And then you've got all of that colour to look forward to again when they come back in spring. So do think about that. Do think about how many seasons of interest you want from the tree. Think about the size. Think about what it's going to look like all every month of the year. And that should help narrow down your choice for the perfect tree in your garden.